As an athlete, we know we train hard so we can sprint fast, jump high, be explosive, and again, make plays. Uh, but also another hidden benefit of that is really injury prevention. And we're going to talk about hamstring strains here today. Uh, hamstring strains are the leading cause of lost playing time. So again, whether the hamstring strain occurs, whether you're playing uh, the sport itself, or again, whether it happens in practice. Hamstring strains can be prevented, but quickly we're going to cover the four main factors that cause them, and also some of our top exercises that you can do at home, or again, in your training, so you can prevent them. So not only it keeps you safe and keeps those injuries away, but also boosts your performance as well, so it's a win-win. First, let's hit on real quick what hamstring injuries are and what causes them. And the four main factors that really cause hamstring injuries are number one, just weakness. So again, the fact that you lack strength, again, more specifically in your hamstrings. So that's number one. Number two is having strength and balances. So again, having uh, a stronger left leg than a stronger right leg, or again, vice versa. So that way, the imbalances, again, can cause um, hamstring strains in that weaker leg. Three is your muscle fascial length. So again, the length of your hamstrings, whether they're shorter and stiffer, or whether they're, they're longer and more, I guess, supple per se, as a fancy word, having the proper length in your hamstrings. So again, that comes to core strength as well. So that way those muscles can relax and they're not all super tense stuff. And lastly is fatigue. Uh, injuries drastically increase. Again, the studies have been shown that just muscle injuries, period, occur as fatigue sets in. Because we know our feet start getting heavy, we feel like we're running in sand, we're getting sloppy. So again, if we're sprinting at high speeds and we're fatigued and we're tired out, again, it's just inevitable that it might happen, again, if we're not, if we don't put these proper measures into place. So the solution to hamstring strains is eccentric training. So again, eccentric basically meaning a controlled tempo on the lowering portion of the face. So just use my biceps and some down here. So again, if I'm pushing down, I'm resisting the motion, so I'm creating tension in that muscle, but I'm letting it actively lengthen. Or if I was doing a bench press, that lower portion of the weight coming down to me. That is the eccentric portion. That's the really emphasis of the training that's gonna help you prevent hamstring strain. So again, really overload that. And we'll hop into details a little bit later, but again, we'll show you these exercises first. First one is eccentric glute bridges. So uh, you can use a towel on the gym floor, or again, if you have paper plates at home. So we're just gonna start with the sliders on our heels. This is kind of like level one to start. So start from here, the glute bridge position. Start with your hips up, toes up. And again, to take about five seconds for your legs to go straight. So five, four, three, two, one. You can rest and reset. Five, four, three, two, one. So again, that's kind of level one. Doing sets of like eight to 10 reps. So you go ahead and get started with those. That's kind of phase one of teaching you how to create tension in your hamstrings, how to be active while lengthening, and just getting used to loading those hamstrings in a safe, simple environment where you don't really have too much going on, and you can just focus on building strength again in those hamstrings. If we wanted to take that up a notch, we can just do single leg eccentric sliders. So again, you're gonna take more uh, of our body weight in our demand, and we're gonna place it on one leg. So again, exact same thing, starting with the hips up, again, nice slow and controlled, five, four, three, Two, one, come back up, reset. Five, four, three, two, one. So the leg goes straight. So again, uh, drastically increases the demand, helps you really overload the muscle and the tissue in that single leg. Obviously you can do both sides, but again, uh, overloading the muscle is the name of the game to build that eccentric strength for you. All right, so phase three, we're not getting fancy with the exercises, we're just adding extra stress, so extra load, so we're increasing the difficulty on those hamstrings. So again, just use the bar as a glute bridge, bring the hips up, just start with that glute bridge, going five seconds on the way out, five, four, three, two, one, just complete control, come back up, reset, five, four, Three, two, one, and again, reset. So again, all this is doing is adding extra load to the hamstrings, overloading those muscles, building strength, building length. So again, one of those uh, factors for injuries in hamstrings. Again, this training builds strength, it builds length, and prevents hamstring strains. Before we get to our final two exercises, the quick two reasons that eccentric training is the focus and studies show that it prevents hamstring strains is number one, that it withstands tissue damage. So again, uh, that eccentric loading, that lengthening of the muscle, builds extra muscle fibers, it builds strength. So again, the greater stress that those muscles can withstand, the, the higher force that they can uh, withstand that load at helps to prevent hamstring strains, number one. And number two, the eccentric training also helps build length to that hamstring muscle. So it builds strength and it builds length. So that's your fun fact. Now back to your exercise. 
All right, so now increasing the demand on those muscles is we're gonna use this glute ham raise machine. We're gonna dig our toes into this back plate, then drive our knees into the pad, make sure we prevent a nice tight core. And again, we're gonna focus on that eccentric phase, that four, three, two, one. And again, drive our knees forcefully back through. We want to withstand our whole body weight falling forward. And again, really feel like, the, it feels like those hamstrings are really ripping apart. Again, we have to go through that training to uh, withstand that stress. So again, glute hamstring curls, great variation. And now we're gonna show you one you can do uh, with a partner, again, at home or at school, wherever you guys are at. So again, if you don't have access to a glute ham machine. All right, so the final variation is the Nordic hamstring curl. Again, you can do this with a partner where they're sitting on top of your feet. And again, locking your ankles down like you see this picture over here. This is a great variation. Use the exact same principles that you applied or that we applied we learned in this video of that lowering phase and then also the overcoming phase when you're coming up. Fall start again by falling down and again resetting from the top. As you build and progress, you can go fall all the way down and again overcome. I know I was racing my one friend Matt. He's a baseball pitcher now, but we were, we were doing a race. I got off to a good start. He started pulling ahead of me. And one of my colleagues, he's seen me from the back. It looks like, he said it looks like I was like shot and I just dropped. So again, I pulled my hamstring before. I know it doesn't feel great. And again, that thing like lingered for like weeks and maybe even up to a month. So again, put this into your training. Make sure you're really overloading those hamstrings so you can perform at your best, but also prevent little nagging injuries like hamstring strains. Also grab your four week speed, strength, and power program so you can be an explosive athlete. And again, Josh from Athletic Preparation here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Don't pull your hamstring.